<clears throat> all right so uh, hello and welcome to an academy my name is aditi bhat and i'll be conducting your session on daily legal current affairs uh, wherein we will be analyzing the hindu newspaper for 25th of may that uh, that is today okay and uh, so before i start uh, the session i would like to thank all the uh, people and jinhone uh, bhi comments kiye and bahut achhe positive comments kiye wo comments pad ke you know i felt like uh, uh, i am you know that uh, i need to improve more and uh, and i am waiting for your feedback also there's a, like comments pad ke it gave me a lot of motivation so thank you for your kind words whoever has commented and uh, right to all people who have uh, written comments and yes uh, do give me feedback also so right so that i can improve more and uh, i can contribute in your learning okay your as well as my learning okay now let's start with today's session so before i proceed further this is the link for my telegram channel so you can join my telegram channel for regular uh, updates related to classes so wherein i'll be sharing the youtube links for uh, my, that is the links for my youtube sessions and i'm also sharing the pdf of the hindu newspaper also i am uh, uh, currently drafting a compilation of important concepts and notes related to clat legal reasoning i uh, once it is completed i'll be sharing it on the telegram channel okay so you can join the telegram channel with the help of this link or you can scan the barcode here also if you are planning to uh, take any of the subscriptions available on the unacademy platform then to unlock free classes and subscription discounts you can use the referral code abclat okay all right so let's uh start okay so these are highlights for today a uh, first uh, first news item is related to sengol i'm pretty sure you all must have heard of sengol it has been quite a news uh, especially since yesterday because abhi um, jo central vista project hai that is a new parliament building wo 28th may ko uska inauguration hoga aur sengol which is a symbolic way of transfer of power to wo uh, it's a scepter actually to um, wo kafi news mein hai pichle uh, दो तीन दिनों से एंड स्पेशली लास्ट नाइट वॉज क्वाइट इन न्यूज सो देर आर टू न्यूज आइटम रिलेटेड टू दिस पर्टिकुलर इशू हाउ अ लेटर टू पी एम ओ सेट ऑफ सर्च फॉर सेंगोल न्यू पार्लियामेंट टू हाउस सेप्टर दैट सिम्बलाइज ट्रांसफर ऑफ पावर इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन ओके सो वील रीड acha then uh, the second news item relates to ties that bind won't let anyone mar india australia ties says prime minister so this is related to india australia ties and uh, the agreements between the india and australia india australia relations okay and uh, uh, their bilateral agreement when it comes to international uh, you know law uh, then the third is aap government moves supreme court against ngt order to make lieutenant governor head of panel so uh, this is related to the yamuna rejuvenation project so we'll uh, look it uh, look at it from the environmental law perspective as in what is national green tribunal firstly and what is what uh, is the river river Re rejuvenation project ye kaha pe covered hai what are the uh, constitution and statutory framework related to river Re rejuvenation acha then uh, the fourth news item that we will be covering is high court grants time to author to submit affidavit in contempt of court case so this is a contempt of court case uh, right and so we'll talk about contempt of court and we'll understand what are what are the laws related to it okay then independence of judiciary is part of basic structure of constitution so yes uh, we are going to talk about the basic structure doctrine sixth is india said to triple speed of its fastest supercomputers now this is more you know slightly there are in fact few news items today which are uh, which do not have that much of legal uh, implications to it but they have more you know they are more from your gk point of view so that's why i've added because they are important news so uh, ones that are very important i uh, make sure that i add them so so that you don't miss out on anything okay so india said to triple speed of its fastest supercomputers so we'll talk about supercomputers what is national supercomputing mission and uh, the satyajit uh, seventh news item is satyajit ray skin welcome court order on copyright so yes we are going to look into what is ipr and what are copyright laws in india 
ओके अच्छा ग्लोबल बॉडी कीप्स एनएचआरसी वेटिंग ओवर पॉलिटिकल मेडलिंग सो देर हैव बीन रीसेंट अमेंडमेंट इन द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट एक्ट under which the national human rights commission has been established so we'll look into firstly we'll look into both the uh, both uh, the legislation as well as the nhrc that is the national human rights commission and then we'll talk about the amendment as well okay now the ninth is bulgarian writer wins international booker prize this is also related from your gk point of view then the 10th the last news item that we will be covering is wto reforms an urgent and top priority for india says minister patel so what are what is wto and what are the reforms that are needed in world trade organization okay so before i proceed further this is uh, the new announcement is that you can now you uh, once you take the subscription on an academy platform you can save up to 50% on your uh, on your subscription uh, you know uh total amount and along with that you can also avail one month free extension so if you are let's say if you are taking a one year uh, course right right one year subscription of an academy you you will get that is 12 months then you will get 13 months and 50% off on that one year fee subscription fee okay so this offer is valid only for 4 days may 22nd to 26th right today is 25th of may so today and tomorrow you have two days left so please make sure that you um, you know avail these uh, offers and uh, to make sure make uh, to get 50% discount you can use the referral code abclat okay now uh, again see unbel unbelievable savings limited period offer for 6 months for you, you see 7 months you'll get 13 uh, you'll get 28000 uh the subscription amount is 28000 for say, for 7 months again for 13 months it's 40000 and for iconic subscription uh, in iconic subscription you get one on one mentor support and printed notes as well so uh, like i in a, under iconic subscription you will get all the features of plus subscription and along with that you will also be provided with one on one uh, you know mentor help and uh, printed notes as well so uh, iconic subscription is a better deal i would say and uh, see here you can get for 6 months uh, the subscription fee is 41000 and and for 13 it will be 54000 and for availing 50% subscription discount you can use the code abclat okay all right so clad printed mock test kick start your clad preparation with an academy 10 sectional mocks 10 full length mocks delivered right to your doorstep available with all iconic and 9 month and above plus subscriptions okay so, so you can subscribe today for mocks all right and uh, this is the best part on uh, i mean this is the may calendar for uh, free mock test series uh, clad mock test series so uh this is the calendar now uh, the next mock test free mock test will be the all india du llb free mock test so uh, you can register for free on an academy platform for these mocks if you attempt these mocks and you uh, you score well you can get up to 90% scholarship so that's a this is a bumper offer right so you can avail 90% up to 90% scholarships in uh, your subscription so that is also very good so i would recommend that you uh, you know uh go and ace these mocks so that you can get more and more scholarship discount okay then you can uh, uh, for students who are in class 11th and who have some time uh, in your preparation then they can join the level up batch right this is for students of class 11th or students who have some time uh, like few years and they can join the session and uh, the ones who are in class 12th and they are preparing alongside with their boards or ones who have already joined a course in any of the colleges and who are side by side preparing for clat they can join the warrior batch okay this is also crack cuet pg law du llb in 30 days and you ma you all must be knowing that clat uh, date is out i think it's on 3rd of december this year so start preparing okay so you can uh, uh enroll to any of the unacademy courses okay so let's start with today's session this is new parliament to house scepter that symbolizes transfer of powers in 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi within, will install the Sengol. Sengol is basically a scepter given by the British to India. Now, uh, ye jo Sengol hai na, this ye, uh, scepter, it, uh, you know, it's um, generally you must have seen na, Purane Zaman mein Raja Maharaja, ik, uh, you know, scepter hold karte the. This was symbolic of power, right? So, it is an Indian scepter, which is very old and this was the Chola Kingdom, the Chola Empire, the Chola, Chola Dynasty in Tamil Nadu. This is the first time it is coming. And the Cholas have followed this thing. After that, the Mauryas have followed it. Okay, many of them, I mean, all of them, all of them, all of them, all of them, I and uh, this has been this was initially सबसे पहला जो सबसे पुराना इसका evidence मिलता है that is in from Chola dynasty in Tamil Nadu. Okay. तो और in fact जब Britishers भी आए थे उसके बाद Britishers ने जब handover किया था India को while during our Indian independence 1947 में तब पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू को ये जो Sengol है ये हैंडओवर किया था जस्ट इट इज अ सिंबॉलिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ ट्रांसफर ऑफ पावर ओके नाउ इसके ऊपर नंदी बने हैं एंड उसमें इसमें और लक्ष्मी भी बनी है लक्ष्मी जी की uh, वो भी है uh, प्रतिमा एंड देन उसमें uh, यहाँ पे तमिल में बहुत सारे इंस्क्रिप्शन हैं देर इज अर इज एन डॉक्यूमेंट्री आई थिंक इट इज अ फाइव मिनट और सेवन मिनट डॉक्यूमेंट्री बाय प्रेस इंफॉर्मेशन प्रेस इंफॉर्मेशन ब्यूरो तो आप PIB के वेबसाइट पे जाके सेंगोल से रिलेटेड जो डॉक्यूमेंट्री उन्होंने बनाई है, I think it was released yesterday only and it is there on YouTube. ठीक है, what I'll do is I'll share the link of this documentary on the Telegram channel. ठीक है, तो ये डॉक्यूमेंट्री है, seven minutes की है, it's a short but उन्होंने एनिमेटेड वे में पूरा बहुत अच्छे से समझाया है उसमें and it's beautifully made and तो उसमें you know you can go and watch it. So you will get an entire idea. So um, the Britishers, this was also given by the British to India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru to represent the transfer of power in 1947 in the new parliament building. Right? Uh, achha, the scepter kept, so uh, basically kya hua ki Indian independence ke baad pe, you know, this was placed in uh, Jawaharlal Nehru's house in Allahabad. And uh, but उसके बाद फिर you know somehow ये जो memory से निकल गया लोगों की memory से चला गया but अभी lately you know this uh, the a letter was written to the prime minister's office by dancer Padma Subramaniam the set of a meticulous research into the Sengol leading to uh, the installation of the golden scepter in the new parliament building when it is inaugurated on May 28th okay Sources uh, in the cultural ministry, cultural ministry said that Dr. Subramaniam had quoted an article in the Tamil magazine Tughlaq, which had carried details of the ceremony in 1945. The article had appeared in May 2021 and the dancer and researcher had requested the government to make this information public on the occasion of Independence Day. This year, the tone for a relook at the historical event and culture ministry team assisted by experts from Indira Gandhi Natural Cent National Center for the Arts began the research into uh, reports. The Sengal ceremony seemingly took uh, place minutes before India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru hoisted the national flag and made his famous tryst with destiny speech on 15th August 1947. It has been kept at his Prayagraj. It had been kept at his Prayagraj residence turned museum till now. It was found to have been widely reported in Indian and foreign media at the time, including the Time magazine. With the nation ravaged by partition and violence, the ceremony had to be arranged post haste and it not being legal or formal matter remained unrecorded because that ceremony was unrecorded. As a result, the sacred Sengol and its vesting ceremony seem to have disappeared from the institutional memory of Indian state. Okay, so now of course it is being reintroduced, right? It was in 2017 that reports again began uh, appearing in the Tamil media about how minutes before Mr. Uh, Nehru addressed uh, the nation as the Prime Minister, the government of India had followed the sacred Sengol vesting 
model of the chola kings of tamil nadu for transfer of power from the british to indians the then prime minister had been handed over the sengal with the nandi bull deity uh, finial uh, amid the singing of the sacred tamil text thevaram symbolic of divine blessings and command to rule justly and fairly they found that uh, the golden scepter was studded with jewels and worth at that time it was worth around rupees 15000 at that time in 1947 and it was made by humidi bangaru chetty and sons these are famous jewelers and diamond merchants of chennai okay all right so this is the 5 foot long intricately carved unbending gold plated silver scepter with a finial of nandi bull deity was specially commissioned by the then uh thiruva uh, thiruvava duthurai sorry if i am not able to pronounce it correctly adhinam point pontiff and was handed to over to nehru theek okay, hai so this was the there is a matha and uh, the pontiff of the matha theek okay? hai and uh, all right so this is uh, so this is an interesting thing so that's why i have included it in, it in today's news item okay so yeah see transfer of power is not a mere exchange of documents it is done when the government runs according to the traditions and culture sengal in the new parliament building indicates the sentiments espoused by nehru ji in 1947 so okay theek okay, hai so all right uh please watch i'll share the link in the telegram channel related to the pib so it's there on youtube also so you can watch it on youtube as well uh, anywhere I'll share the link so you can watch the documentary okay it's very interesting all right then the next uh, news item that we will be looking into is uh ties that bind won't let anyone mar india australia ties says prime minister okay so india australia will not tolerate any elements that may harbor plans to harm strong bilateral ties prime minister narendra modi speaking at a joint press statement okay and uh, the two sides have decided to focus on upgrading the economic cooperation and trade agreement to the level of a comprehensive economic cooperation agreement and uh, so we we'll look into what is ecta right and uh, then this particular you see here so first we'll talk about the first two news items because there are th actually three news items related to this particular issue but uh, here you know in this particular news item they have actually talked about need for reform mr quatra also said the two leaders had discussed the need for reform of the unsc that is united nations security council so here we'll be talking about the united nations security council all right theek okay, hai so let's see what is an india australia ecta india australia ecta is um economic cooperation and trade agreement this is ecta okay all uh, right then uh, this is the first free trade agreement this is the first I'll just write FTA, Free Trade Agreement, that India has signed with major developed countries in over a decade. The agreement encompasses cooperation across entire gamut of bilateral economic and commercial relations relationship. So, cooperation across different sectors. Um. Different bilateral. economic and commercial relations so um between the two friendly countries so k 
किन किन अदर डिफरेंट बायोलैटरल अग्रीमेंट ठीक है तो जैसे की अग्रीमेंट ट्रेड इन अग्रीमेंट रिलेटेड टू बायोलैटरल अग्रीमेंट रिलेटेड टू ट्रेड इन गुड्स एंड रूल्स ऑफ ओरिजिन then uh, it's related to trade uh, trade in services trade in goods trade in services uh, technical barriers to trade and then you also have a um, uh, dispute settlement and movement of natural persons so dispute settlement mechanisms and uh, telecom custom procedures customs basically then we have the pharmaceuticals so pharma industry right and cooperation in different other areas so the ecta provides for an institutional mechanism to encourage and improve trade between two countries ECTA between India and Australia covers almost all tariff lines dealt in by India and Australia. India will benefit from preferential market access provided by Australia on 100% of its tariff lines. This includes all labor intensive sectors of export, interest to India such as gems, jewelry, textile, leather, footwear, furniture, etc. On the other hand, India will be offering preferential access to Australia on over 70% of its tariff lines, including lines of export interest to Australia, which are primarily raw materials like coal, mineral ores, wines, etc. And uh, under this agreement, the STEM students, you know, there is a also promotion of STEM. STEM stands for you must have heard right science technology engineering and mathematics so indian graduates from stem uh, will be granted extended post study work visas they will be granted extended post study work visa so there are many students right from india who go to uh, australia for study so the students from stem category students in stem under stem category will be granted uh, extended post study work visas under this particular uh, bilateral agreement australia will also set up program to grant visas to young indians looking to pursue working holidays in australia annual visa quota of 1800 is to be instituted for indian yoga teachers and chefs so there is a demand in australia for indian yoga teachers and for chefs and indian chefs okay yeah uh, it is also estimated that 10 lakh jobs will be created as a result of ecta right so creation of jobs is also one important uh, factor here it will boost job uh, creation and it covers almost all uh, you know it will boost bilateral trade in goods and services and will enhance exports removing any kind of trade barriers cheaper raw materials so the, see there will be cheaper raw materials and stronger indo pacific stronger indo pacific region strong australia india economic ties will also pave the way for stronger indo pacific economic architecture that's not just based on flows of physical goods money and people but on the basis of building capacity led connections complementaries uh, sustainable commitments mutual dependence across countries and sub regions all right and it will also provide for investment protection you know more and more investment and investment uh, you know foreign direct investment under between these two countries investment as part of trade and services it lacks uh, right so all right so this is uh, i hope this is clear 
and india australia india and australia relations have been uh quite significant all right so from your international point of view you need to know, uh, you need to know what is uh, which countries have signed the ECTA so ECTA recently has been signed by the uh, india by india and australia so you can point that out here and now they are planning to upgrade it to uh, upgrade it to c c a c c e c a c a uh, this is comprehensive it stands for comprehensive economic cooperation agreement this is c e c a okay this is a you can say it's the 2.0 ecta 2.0 you can say it's an upgraded version of ecta okay c c a c a uh, c a okay all right i hope this is clear yes both india and australia also share a vision for free open inclusive and rule based indo pacific region and cooperate use of the seas by adherence to so there is uh, both india and australia are very particular about the un clause un clause stands for united nations convention on the law of seas and a peaceful resolution of disputes rather than through unilateral and coercive actions so un clause is basically a convention it's an international legal framework which determines how the countries are supposed to behave when it comes to law of seas there is a particular these this uh, convention itself is the is an international framework which guides ki when uh, this when the countries are uh, when they have their vessels in the sea then how uh, it will be determined and what are the international borders when it comes to sea all right and what are high high water so in fact we will uh, discuss un clause in one of the concept sessions okay and i will also share the notes related to it on the telegram channel okay now this is the second um, part of the article which talks about need for union unsc reforms need for unsc reforms okay so unsc stands for united nation security council it is one of the main six organs you, you have you know right six organs united nations ke there are six uno organs so six kaun kaun se hain first is unsc then we have united nations general assembly united nations security council united nations general assembly we also have the secretariat then we have the uh, economic and social council ecosoc yeah we have the icj that is the international court of justice and we have the trusteeship council ठीक है ये छह ऑर्गन्स हैं और जो आपको पता होने चाहिए फॉर योर एग्जाम दीज आर द सिक्स ऑर्गन यू एन एस सी यू एन जी ए सेक्रेटेरियट इकोसॉक आईसीजे ट्रस्टीशिप काउंसिल ठीक है और इनके बेसिक फंक्शन पता होने चाहिए ठीक है क्लैट के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से वेन वॉज यू एन ओ वेन वॉज यूनाइटेड नेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन स्टैब्लिश पोस्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर टू पोस्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर वन क्या स्टैब्लिश हुआ था लीग ऑफ नेशंस सो वी हैड लीग ऑफ नेशंस जो कि वर्ल्ड वॉर वन के बाद स्टैब्लिश हुआ था बाद में यू नो लीग ऑफ नेशंस फेल्ड एंड ऑफ कोर्स इट वॉज देन इट वॉज रिप्लेस्ड बाय यूनाइटेड नेशंस सो यू एन एस सी क्या करता है यू एन एस सी बेसिकली प्रोवाइड पावर दर्गेनाइजेशन गिव एक्सेसिव पावर्स टू पी फाइव पी फाइव आर द परमानेंट फाइव मेंबर्स राइट एंड दिस इज Uh, which emerged as super powers in that era us time pe jo super powers emerge ho rahe the unko for example us uk france and uh, uh, then uh, we have china right and uh, we also have russia here so these are the five uh, p5 uh, under unsc 
So UNSC, United Nations Security Council, has a mandate to maintain international peace and security as a centerpiece of global uh, multilateralism. It selects uh, the United Nations Sec Secretary General. So, बहुत सारे इसकी functions हैं. So let's not go into those. So U UNSC का comp composition क्या है कि इसमें 15 members हैं total. Total 15 members हैं. Right? जिसमें कि uh, 10 होते हैं non permanent members and 5 होते हैं permanent members ठीक है so P5 and 10 are non permanent ये जो permanent है ये तो because they are permanent so they always remain but ये जो 10 non permanent है they are elected in every two years elected in every two years और Two years में मतलब कोई अगर एक साल एक particular tenure में you know UNSC membership hold कर रहा है तो next consecutive sec two years में they cannot apply for UNSC membership right so this is the this is the rule right India was holding अभी recently India was holding UNSC membership from 2021 2021 and 2022, right? Two years India was holding UNSC membership. Um, you can check the dates and let me know which dates exactly was India holding UNSC membership. The last two years you can say India was, and India was also presiding over. India presided over the UNSC uh, chairmanship. Okay. Now India has served seven times. India has served seven times in the United Nations Security Council as non-permanent member. And in January 2021, India entered UNSC for eighth time. So अभी total हो गया है eight times. So January 2021. So I think the the date would have been from Jan 2021 to to Jan 2023. ठीक है this was the tenure for India. The last two years, so eight, eight times India has been member of uh, United Nations Security Council, non permanent member, and India has been advocating. It has been advocating permanent seat in UNSC, permanent seat. Now the problem is why we are talking about reform is because uh, gauge of UNSC 1945 me UNSC bana tha. राइट यूएनएससी के जो मेंबर्स थे 1945 में उस टाइम पे यू नो द बेस्ट द गुड पार्ट फर्स्ट दैट इंडिया वाज ऑफर्ड अ परमानेंट मेंबरशिप इंडिया वाज ऑफर्ड एट दैट टाइम अ परमानेंट सीट इन द यूनाइटेड नेशन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल बट इंडिया गेव अवे दैट सीट टू चाइना फॉर वी डोंट नो व्हाट रीजन बट यस but uh, so now of course india has been struggling for a permanent seat and uh, not just india see 1945 mein jo developed countries thi wo thi us uk france china russia and us basis pe uh, permanent five membership unko allot kar di unko de di gayi thi but aaj ke time mein you know, there are several other countries which are emerging and they are developing and they are really they are among the top economies of the world so india is the fifth largest economy currently in the world right similarly you'll see countries like south africa right countries like japan countries like uh, south korea right countries like uh, germany these are countries which are quite developed and uh, they uh, are also one of the largest economies. They are also contributors in the global GDP, right? Quite significant contributors in the global GDP and global trade and uh, all the parameters. But they are not uh, permanent members. So permanent, the um, demand is for expanding the seats for permanent membership. Okay, so the number of permanent membership should increase. This, is, this has been a demand. Right, India took active part in uh, UDHR, so which is Universal Declaration of Human Rights, UDHR 1948, and raised its voice passionately against racial discrimination in South uh, Africa. 
India has played its part in formulating decisions. So India has basically contributed extensively to United Nations, particularly for maintenance of international peace and security. India has taken part in 43 peacekeeping uh, missions and India is the third largest uh, troop contributor that is uh, uh, right with 700 uh, with around 7000 personnel deployed with 10 united nations peacekeeping missions and uh, india's demand for permanent seat in unsc is completely rational all right so there are certain issues related to united nations security council there is an absence of record and text of meetings so whenever the meetings are con uh, conducted the records are not maintained right the usual united nations rules don't apply to unsc deliberations and no records of uh, are kept of its meetings there is no text of the meeting to discuss amend or object uh, right and there is a lot of power play in unsc to kai bar aisa dekha gaya hai ki india koi proposal rakhta hai and china usko baki sare other countries us, us proposal ko approve bhi kar de china veto se because they have these P5 members, you know, they have a veto power. So, this is excessive power. Ho jati hai. So, this is an excessive power. So, if one person is the P5, ka, jo P5 hai, hai, unme se kisi ek member has the member, if one member has the veto, then the proposal it will fall down again. It, will, it has to be a unanimous approval. Otherwise, it will not be considered an approval. So, this is the defect. Keep ये जो permanent five है उनका unanimous और India और China के काफी सारे you know disputes चल रहे हैं और बहुत time से चलते भी आए so that's why a lot of India's proposals have been vetoed by China, right? So there's a lot of power play and there's a lot of uh, you can say impartiality or you can say there is a the power is not proportionally divided amongst the countries amongst the state. Right, the veto powers that UNSC's permanent five members enjoy is an anachronism in this age. The elite decision making structure does not suit the current global security needs. Aajke time mein kya hai na? We talk about a global village. Everyone is connected. No country can have a closed economy in today's time. Everyone is dependent on one another. So we have. Um, uh, no country can sustain itself, uh, you know, sustain completely by itself. They have to, you know, enter into trade with other countries. This is the, this is the general, you know, principle. And uh, because this is how the world is functioning to, in today's time. So that's why we are talking about global village, right? India, uh, and of course, now this is now the scenario is quite different from 1945. 1945 ke time, mein, uh, in fact, there were countries that they actually had a closed economy and they even benefited by being a closed economy by having a protect, protectionist regime. But now, the scenario is not going right? No one can be a closed economy. So, now, what is that there are emerging countries the countries which are contributing significantly to the global gdp so they should also be considered as members of uh you know unsc permanent five or the permanent members as permanent members and because unsc is not really updated jo unsc ki jo membership hai, it's not up to date you can say because uh, aaj bhi wo old pattern follow kar rahi hai to aaj ke time ke saath uh, uh, updated nahi hai so in, it needs upgradation there is under representation in united nations security council organization and um, then the absence of unsc of the globally important countries like india germany brazil south africa is a matter of concern the existing gaps in terms of under representation of regions especially from africa asia latin america is crippling the unsc as a global institution so unsc is uh, now you know it's not being it's crippling as a global institution governing international peace and security and uh, what we need to do is we need a democrat a democratization of unsc the imbalances in power relationships among the permanent five and the rest of the world needs to be corrected urgently there is necessary this is necessary to make unsc more democratic and give it greater legitimacy to govern 
ensuring that the principles of international peace security and order are respected universally and unsc needs to be expanded to ye sare kuch you know reforms hain which have been proposed by several countries and india is also because india now uh, abhi india ka contribution global level pe bahut hai india is of course now it is also representing you know voice of global south it is voice of global south राइट right? uh, हम लोगों ने कल ही बात करी थी फिपिक समिट की सो या वॉइस ऑफ ग्लोबल साउथ सो दैट्स व्हाई यू नो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यूएनएससी टू यू नो फॉर रिफॉर्म्स टू बी इंप्लीमेंटेड इन यूएनएससी ऑल राइट ओके देन so what you need to understand from your uh, clack point of view is the united nation security council framework the six uh, members or the organs of the united nations organization and uh, what is the structure of unsc and what are the uh, reforms that are required okay all right the next news item that we will be covering is aap government makes move uh, or moves supreme court against ngt order to make lieutenant governor head of panel in a new twist, twist to its ongoing tussle with lieutenant governor vinay kumar saxena the delhi government filed a petition in the supreme court challenging ngt order appointing uh, him chairperson of high level committee on yamuna rejuvenation project in its plea the delhi government argued that mr saxena's appointment was a violation of constitutional scheme of governance and uh, the two supreme court orders the ngt had constituted the committee in january this year to address the issue of pollution in yamuna the government contended that the executive powers granted to lg through ngt order encroach upon areas exclusively under the com- competence of elected government okay so first we need to understand what is the river re- rejuvenation pro- uh, project what is the process rejuvenation किसी रिवर बॉडी को किसी वाटर बॉडी को रिवाइव करने का प्रोसेस ठीक है सो रिवर एजुबिनेशन इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ रिवाइविंग और रिस्टोरिंग द नेचुरल फ्लो एंड हेल्थ ऑफ रिवर दैट हैज बीन डैमेज ड्यू टू ह्यूमन एक्टिविटी सच एज वेस्ट डंपिंग एनक्रोचमेंट पॉल्यूशन द प्रोसेस इन्वॉल्व 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 रिमूविंग पॉल्यूटन क्लीनिंग अप रिवर बेड्स रिस्टोरिंग नेचुरल इन्वायरमेंट अराउंड द रिवर इट कैन हेल्प टू रिस्टोर द uh flora and fauna of that particular area right promote biodiversity provide cleaner water for drinking and irrigation reviving wo- rivers can also boost tourism in the region and improve livelihoods of people that depend on river for their livelihoods and furthermore river rejuvenation can help to control floods and reduce the damage caused by them so uh, it can also be you know uh, looked from your disaster management point of view it can mitigate disasters mitigation a healthy river can absorb excess water during heavy rains and prevent flooding in downstream areas this can save lives and property and reduce economic impact of floods in 2022 the ministry of environment forest and climate change released around 19000 crore detailed project reports dprs on rejuvenation of various rivers including yamuna to so yamuna was also included and through forestry interventions राइट एंड एक एग्जाम्पल तो जो कि आप लोगों को सबको पता होगा दैट इज गंगा एक्शन प्लान दिस इज ऑल्सो एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ रिवर एजुबिनेशन प्रोजेक्ट गंगा एक्शन प्लान इन इंडिया द गंगा एक्शन प्लान इज एन ऑन गोइंग प्रोजेक्ट एम डेट क्लीनिंग अप एंड रेजुबिनेटिंग द हाईली पोल्यूटेड गंगा रिवर द प्रोजेक्ट इन्वॉल्व द रेंज ऑफ इंटरवेंशन इंक्लूडिंग द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ सीवेज ट्रीटमेंट प्लान क्रिएशन ऑफ ग्रीन बेल्ट अलॉन्ग रिवर बैंक एंड प्रमोशन ऑफ इको फ्रेंडली एक्टिविटीज ठीक है अच्छा वॉट इज नाउ लेट्स जस्ट रिवाइज हम लोग ने ऑलरेडी डिस्कस किया है वॉट इज नेशनल ग्रीन ट्राइब्यूनल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नीड टू नो दैट इट इज अजाय जुडिशियल बॉडी एंड यू नीड टू नो फ्रॉम योर क्लैक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ये कुछ बेसिक फंडामेंटल कॉन्सेप्ट है ठीक है डिफरेंस बिटवीन जुडिशियल बॉडी and quasi judicial body okay uh, so any kind of tribunal ye jaise ngt is a tribunal so that would fall under the category of a quasi judicial body right so 
uh, you can revise the difference between judicial and quasi judicial you can refer to i'll be uh, sharing the notes as well so ngt is a specialized body set up under ngt act of 2010 Uh, for effective and expeditious disposal of cases relating to environment, because environment के जो cases आते हैं ना, they are very uh, technical cases. They require technical expertise. Okay, so for example, we have environmental engineers. We have people who have, uh, you know, um, for example, forest specialists, soil specialists. So, uh, जब भी environment से related कोई भी cases होते हैं, क्या होता है कि जो normal courts हैं. पहले जब एनजीटी नहीं आया था तो जो नॉर्म जो इन्वायरमेंट के मैटर्स होते थे वो सुप्रीम कोर्ट या हाई कोर्ट जाते जाते थे ठीक है एंड वहां पे क्योंकि टेक्निकल एक्सपर्टीज नहीं होती थी तो इस वजह से लाइक द द एक्सपर्टीज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर इन्वायरमेंटल मैटर्स स्पेसिफिकली वाज लैकिंग दैट्स वाई एनजीटी वॉज सेटअप बिकॉज उसमें क्या हो रहा था कि डिले बहुत हो रहा था उन इन्वायरमेंटल uh, मैटर्स को पूरी तरह कंप्लीटली रिजोल्व करने में डिस्प्यूट्स को इसलिए फिर एनजीटी का एनजीटी नेशनल ग्रीन ट्राइब्यूनल वाज सेटअप टू एक्सपेडिशियस टू एक्सपेडाइट द केसेस रिलेटेड टू एनवायरनमेंट बिकॉज एनवायरमेंटल अगर लॉस होता है ना तो लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल अगर किसी को कोई इकोनॉमिक लॉस हुआ इकोनॉमिक लॉस इज रिपेरेबल ठीक है बट एनवायरमेंटल लॉस इज इरिपेरेबल डैमेज ठीक है इट कैन नॉट बी इट कैन नॉट बी टेकन बैक इट कैन नॉट बी रिस्टोर्ड to the full fullest extent jaise ki agar aapne ped kaat diya hai to aap wapas se kaise that if you, even if you plant a tree it will take its own time to grow right so it, that's why uh, jo environment mein generally environment ke jo cases hote hain usme punitive punitive uh, uh, approach nahi use ki jati ye punishment usme kam use kiya jata hai but preventive approach zyada use kari jati hai ki environment ko damage hone se pehle hi bacha liya jaye right that is the whole idea of environmental laws ki uh, environmental laws are focused on preventive approach rather than punitive approach because the environmental laws is an irreparable loss right acha so that's why um, okay so ngt was set up for expediting the disposal of cases related to environmental protection and conservation of forests and other natural resources with the establishment of ngt india became the third country in the world to set up specialized environmental tribunal so along with india uh, australia and uh, new zealand australia and new zealand have specialized um environmental tribunals environmental tribunals okay ngt is mandated to make disposal of applications or appeals finally within 6 months of filing of the same uh or iske jo ngt ke you need to know this this particular fact you need to know ki iske jo uh, benches hain wo kahan pe hain ठीक है, so New Delhi principal bench, principal bench है New Delhi में, ठीक है, so you need to know this because this can be directly asked. Then other benches you can say regional benches कहाँ पे हैं? तो um, regional benches हैं central, central uh, में भोपाल, okay, then वेस्टर्न बेंच वेस्टर्न उसमें यू कैन से पुणे एंड ईस्ट में कोलकाता साउथ में चेन्नई ओके सो दीज आर दीज आर द मेन बेंचेस ऑफ एनजीटी and uh, the ngt is a tribunal it comprises of chairperson judicial members and expert members they shall hold office for a term of 3 years or till the age of 65 years to so retirement age 65 years which is whichever is earlier and um, the chairperson is appointed by the central government in consultation with the chief justice of india okay so appointment hota hai by central government in consultation with cgi this is how the chairperson is appointed 
now i i want all of you to find out who is the ngt chairperson this is your task for today ngt chairperson kon hai aur comment section mein wo likhna hai ki who is the ngt chairperson currently all right okay now um uh, this is a statutory body quasi judicial and a statutory body all right so you don't need to go into the into the details of the legislation from your clad point of view this much information related to ngt is sufficient all right acha now we will move on to next particular case next uh, news item is high court grants time to author to submit a, uh, affidavit uh author anand ranganathan who on wednesday appeared before delhi high court in a criminal contempt case for his alleged remarks against a judge of the court asserted his stand as a free speech absolutist mr ranganathan also denied having made any comment against the judge advocate jay sai deepak representing mr ranganathan said his client only made a general statement taking note of submission a bench of justices siddharth amridul and talwan singh granted four weeks to mr ranganathan to submit an affidavit okay so we look into what is contempt of court so we all know ki article 19 clause 1 sub clause a mein hamare paas freedom of speech and expression hai right speech and expression freedom hai but sim but at the same time under article 19 clause 2 we have reasonable restriction reasonable restrictions mentioned under reason uh, 19 clause 2 kiski baat karta hai reasonable restrictions for 19 1a and okay so uh, reasonable restrictions with uh, with regard to freedom of speech and expression to usme se you know you will see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, restriction reasonable restrictions one of the reasonable restrictions is contempt of court coc theek okay? hai and of course we have defamation we have integrity we have security then public order so on and so forth so ye sare bhi hain and contempt of court is also one of the reasonable restrictions now uh the supreme court under article 129 so article 129 jo hai constitution ka it says it uh, states that supreme court has the power under article 229 has the power to punish for contempt now you don't need to you don't need to remember the articles numbers and uh, you know section and articles just uh, you need to understand the concept okay and this is a ye jo article 129 mein hai uh, this is a constitutional power vesting with the supreme court constitutional power similarly even high courts have this power right under different article even high courts have the power to punish for contempt right and the power to punish for contempt is a constitutional power vested in this court which cannot be abridged or taken away by legislative enactment okay now article 142 clause 2 states that subject to the provisions of any law made by uh, made in this behalf by parliament the supreme court shall have all and every power to make any order on punishment of any contempt of itself okay so um, this also basically states that supreme court shall have uh, every power to make an order on punishment of contempt so supreme court can also devise rules with respect to contempt of court jo rules and punishment rules punishment really uh, provisions related to punishment of contempt of court for contempt of court article 129 lays down that supreme court shall have uh, shall be the court of record because 129 mein court of record ki baat kari gayi hai right so supreme court shall be court of record and shall have all the powers of such a court including the power to punish for contempt the comparison of the two provisions show that whereas the founding fathers felt that the powers under clause 2 of article 142 could be subject to any law made by parliament 
there is no such restriction as far as article 129 is concerned it emphasized that rational rational rationale behind contempt jurisdiction is to maintain dignity of institution of judicial forum so iska jo contempt of court hai uska jo rational hai theek hai ya you can say the legislative intent jab bhi hum kisi law ki baat karte hain koi bhi law uh, introduce kiya jata hai ठीक है तो उसके पीछे लेजिस्लेटिव इंटेंट देखा जाता है उसका जो रैशनल है वो देखा जाता है कि उसके पीछे ये रीजनिंग क्या है व्हाई हैज दिस लॉ बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड नाउ सो द कंटेम्प्ट ऑफ कोर्ट लॉ लॉज रिलेटेड टू कंटेम्प्ट ऑफ कोर्ट और दिस प्रोविजंस इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हैव बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय द कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट असेंबली मेंबर्स राइट टू टू मेंटेन डिग्निटी of the institution of judicial forums okay right and because india uh, in india we have we follow the basic structure doctrine and independence of judiciary is one of the basic uh structure doctrines one okay one of the principles of basic structure doctrines and which we will be covering uh, later in one of the articles and uh, news items so contempt of court is power of court to protect its own majesty and respect the power is regulated but not restricted so humne constitutional framework ki baat kar li right contempt of court se related ab hum statutory framework ko dekh lete hain statutory framework hai contempt of courts act 1971. The expression contempt of court has not been defined. तो ये जो contempt of court है ना, it is basically not defined under the Act or under the Constitution. कहीं भी ये defined नहीं है contempt of court, right? Article 215 और ये जो power है contempt of court की, ये High Courts के पास है under Article 215. 215 के अंदर High Courts के पास power है to punish anyone any person for contempt of court right and contempt of courts act jo hai wo wo civil contempt or criminal contempt dono ka uh, dono ki baat karte hai civil contempt as well as criminal contempt civil contempt refers to willful disobedience of any judgment of the court willful disobedience to any judgment of the court and criminal contempt deals with uh, it can be invoked if an act tends to scandalize or lower the court authority court's authority to scandalize or lower court's authority criminal contempt can also be invoked if it tends to interfere tends to interfere with due course of any judicial proceeding with the due course of any judicial proceeding and obstruct the administration of justice can not be invoked in cases where there is an obstruction in administration of justice okay now um section 5 of the contempt of court act provides for fair criticisms or fair comment to ye ek thode exceptions ki hum baat kar lete hain agar koi uh, fair comment hai koi bhi you know statement hai which was which is uh, commenting it is like a comment or it is like a criticism 
क्रिटिसाइज करना या कमेंट करना तो अलाउड है राइट तो वो कंटेम्प्ट में नहीं आएगा तो दोज विल नॉट बी दे विल नॉट अमाउंट टू कंटेम्प्ट बट उसके भी अगर यू नो मेरिट्स ऑफ द केस बट इट विल बी डिसाइड बाय द कोर्ट ओनली हाउ एवर द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ वॉट इज फेयर और वॉट इज नॉट फेयर इज लेफ्ट टू द इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ द जजेस This open-ended interpretation sometimes compromises the freedom of speech and expression under Article 19A, 19A. So, is me, yeah, yeah, always a tussle, right? Because uh, between Article 19A and Article 19 Clause 2, because contempt of court can't be defined. So, we don't know exactly what contempt of court. We just know that yeah, contempt of court, a particular action uh, that can amount to. contempt of court but we do not know what exactly is the definition of contempt of court okay and uh, sometimes it also violates principles of natural justice so ye sab ye kuch criticisms hai contempt of court ke ki the judges may often be seen to be acting in their own cause thus violating the principles of natural justice principles of natural justice ka ek bahut uh, important principle hai nemo judex जजेसिंग This is violation of principles of natural justice to a certain extent. So judges may often be seen to be acting in their own cause, thus violating the principles of natural justice and adversely, and adversely affecting the public confidence they seek to preserve through the through the proceeding. Okay, so ये हमेशा एक balance maintain करना जरूरी होता है between you know 19 one and 19 two. This is always the tussle. ठीक है सो आई होप दिस इज क्लियर राइट हाँ यहाँ पे यू नो जैसे स्कैंडलाइज और लोअर कोर्ट्स अथॉरिटी टेंस टू इंटरफेयर विद कोर्स ऑफ ये जनरली यू नो दिस इज आई गिव यू एन एग्जांपल ऑफ येलो जर्नलिज्म जैसे आपने कई बार देखा होगा मीडिया हाउसेस क्या होते हैं कोई अगर केस चल रहा है अभी केस पे कोई डिसीजन नहीं आया पर वो लोग अपने मीडिया क्या करती कि अपना खुद ही डिसीजन या खुद ही वो प्रोबेबिलिटीज शो करने लगती है या यू नो वट एवर सो उससे क्या होता है कि जो पब्लिक एट लार्ज गेट्स इन्फ्लुएंस्ड एंड इवन द जजेस मेनी टाइम्स गेट्स गेट इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय डिफरेंट न्यूज आर्टिकल्स रिलेटेड टू दैट पर्टिकुलर कोर्स रिलेटेड टू दैट पर्टिकुलर केस विच इज ऑलरेडी गोइंग ऑन इन द कोर्ट तो क्या हो रहा है कोर्ट में वो केस चल रहा है अभी उसकी सुनवाई चल रही है पर डेली क्या हो रहा है जजेस भी न्यूज पेपर पढ़ते हैं राइट सो दे आर आर ओपनिंग द न्यूज पेपर एवरी मॉर्निंग तो न्यूज न्यूज में वो पर्टिकुलर इशू को किस तरह रिप्रेजेंट किया गया है दैट ऑल्सो टू अर्टन एक्सटेंट कैन अफेक्ट जजेस वे ऑफ थिंकिंग तो उसको यू नो दैट दैट हैज बीन एक्चुअली उस पर बहुत बार कॉमेंट भी आया कि उसमें क्या होता है कि देर इज एन इंटरफेयरेंस विद द ड्यू कोर्स ऑफ एनी जुडिशियल प्रोसीडिंग तो इट माइट इंटरफेयर विद द जजेस वे ऑफ फ्री थिंकिंग ठीक है तो इस वजह से दैट्स आल्सो यू नो पार्ट ऑफ येलो जर्नलिज्म भी इसको कहते हैं सो दैट कैन बी दैट कैन आल्सो अमाउंट टू क्रिमिनल कंटेम्प्ट एंड इफ देयर इज एन ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन और इन द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ जस्टिस दैट वुड आल्सो अमाउंट टू क्रिमिनल कंटेम्प्ट ओके सो आई होप दिस इज क्लियर अच्छा सो नेक्स्ट इज इंडिपेंडेंस ऑफ जुडिशरी इज पार्ट ऑफ बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो वॉट इज बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर नाउ सी The Supreme Court has held the independence of district judiciary is part of the basic structure of the Constitution, and judicial independence from the executive and legislature requires the judiciary to have a say in matters of finances. Judiciary must possess the power to compel payment of money which is necessary to carry out its mandated responsibilities. Independence of district judiciary must also be equally a part of basic structure of the Constitution. without impartial and independent judges in the district judiciary justice a preambular goal would remain illusory 
the district judiciary in most cases also the court which is most accessible to the litigant district judge district courts are most accessible to the litigant because they are the first uh, resort that uh, generally the parties take first step so three judge bench uh, comprising of cgi and justice v subramaniam and tv ps narasimha Uh, they observed in the judgment. The judgment is based on petition filed by All India Judges, Judges Association, giving a series of directions to amend the service rules of district judiciary and payment of arrears, pensions, additional pension, gratuity, and other retiral benefits. Okay, so this is um, the recommendations were based on recommendations. Uh, the directions were based on recommendation made in the report of the court appointed second. national judicial pay commission headed by justice pv reddy uh, as its chairman and retired and senior advocate r basan so the you can uh, note this particular thing now so uh, we have the second national judicial pay commission ye kyunki pucha ja sakta hai right national judicial pay commission uh this was headed by justice pv reddy okay and uh, as its chairman so it was headed by justice pv reddy the judgment records the crucial role played by the district judiciary in the justice administration system by recording submissions made by its amicus curiae advocate uh, okay and um, the judgment highlighted the doctrine that judiciary must possess the inherent power to compel payment of those sums because it's part of the uh, basic structure doctrine to ab hum log thoda basic structure doctrine ko revise kar lete hain samajh lete hain what is basic structure doctrine bsd okay under the constitution what are the principles related to basic structure doctrine the indian constitution makes no reference to the phrase the basic structure word aapko kahin bhi indian constitution mein nahi milega but ye this has been evolved this is a concept that has been evolved through judicial interpretation judicial interpretation se evolve hua hai ye concept and kis particular case mein the landmark case of keshavananda bharti versus state of kerala all right this case mein judges ne this was a 13 this is uh, considered one of the most important judgments of all time 13 judge bench thi 13 judge constitutional bench and this judgment itself is a 100 1100 uh, 1100 page judgment okay all right so the indian constitution makes no reference to the phrase uh, phrase basic structure over time and through several instances the notion that parliament cannot propose laws that would modify the fundamental framework of the constitution eventually emerged the goal is to safeguard people's rights and liberties while preserving the distinctive features of indian democracy the basic structure of constitution aids in defending and preserving the document's original intent to so basic structure exactly karta kya hai to ye jab case aaya tha keshav nanda bharti uh, judges ke samne unhone kuch points rakhe kuch some points okay which are which will preserve the गोल्स और विच विल इंश्योर की जो गोल्स हैं कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के गोल्स ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड नेचर ऑफ द इंडियन स्टेट ठीक है ये सारी चीजें उसमें दीज स्ट्रक्चर्स दीज बेसिक डॉक्टरिन विल इंश्योर की जो नेचर है इंडियन स्टेट का वो इंटैक्ट है और जो गोल्स एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव्स हैं हमारे इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के ये सब चीजें कहाँ दी हुई हैं दीज हैव बीन एंशाइंड इन आर प्रियम्बल जब भी हम हम अगर प्रियम्बल देखते हैं प्रियम्बल में आप देखिएगा कि उसमें चार चीजें दी गई हैं ठीक है फोर फोर थिंग्स हैव बीन लिस्टेड इन द प्रियम्बल फर्स्ट इज डेट ऑफ इनैक्टमेंट डेट ऑफ 
और सॉरी फर्स्ट इज इट्स फर्स्ट इज वी दीपल तो पहले उसमें ये दिया है कि जो बेसिस है हमारे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन का जो बेसिस है वो है पीपल विल ऑफ द पीपल तो यानी कि हमारा जो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन है इट इज बेस्ड ऑन द विल एंड एस्पिरेशन ऑफ द पीपल ऑफ इंडिया सो दैट इज द बेसिस ऑफ आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सेकेंडली वॉट इज दैट सेकेंड पॉइंट दैट इज गिवन इन प्रियम्बल इज नेचर ऑफ इंडियन स्टेट उसमें ये अब बात करता है प्रियम्बल नेचर ऑफ इंडियन स्टेट दैट इंडियन स्टेट इज अ सॉवरिन रिपब्लिक डेमोक्रेटिक सोशलिस्ट सेक्युलर सोशलिस्ट सेक्युलर बाद में एड किए गए थे बट इनिशियली इट वॉज सॉवरिन रिपब्लिक एंड डेमोक्रेटिक एंड नाउ नाउ ऑफकोर्स यू विल हैव टू रीड ऑल फाइव टूगेदर सो सॉवरिन रिपब्लिक डेमोक्रेटिक सोशलिस्ट सेक्युलर और इन बीच इनके बीच में कभी कहीं भी कॉमा नहीं लगा हुआ है तो बिकॉज उसका इन उसका ऑब्जेक्टिव वही है कि इन पांचों को साथ में रीड करना है ऑल फाइव हैव टू बी रेड टूगेदर बिकॉज दे ऑल कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द नेचर ऑफ इंडियन स्टेट ठीक है तीसरी चीज जो हमारे प्रियम्बल में दी गई है विच आर द ऑब्जेक्टिव हमारे प्रियम्बल के ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या है सॉरी हमारे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या है टू इंश्योर जस्टिस जस्टिस कौन कौन सी सोशल पोलिटिकल इकोनॉमिक जस्टिस ठीक है लिबर्टी लिबर्टी ऑफ थॉट फ्रीडम सो ऑन एंड सो फॉर ठीक है एंड देन फ्रिटर्निटी राइट फ्रिटर्निटी और उसमें अभी इंटेग्रिटी ये सारी चीजें एड की गई All right, and then fourth point, jo fourth uh, point, आप देखोगे, that is uh, the date of enactment, the date of enactment and enforcement. ये दो अलग-अलग dates हैं. Date of enactment is enact कब हुआ था हमारा constitution? Twenty six November twenty six eleven nineteen forty nine को. This is also known as the constitutional law day. and when was our constitution in, uh, enforced 26th january 1950 ye to humko pata hai republic day right so uh, 2611 is the constitutional law day 2601 is the republic day theek hai to ye uh, this is the date of enactment and this is the date of enforcement okay uh, right तो ये सारे जो हैं इनको प्रिजर्व करना ये बिकॉज प्रियम्बल को प्रियम्बल बेसिकली उसका इट इज पार्ट ऑफ आर इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन तो पार्ट है हमारे इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन का एंड इट इज यूज एज एन इंटरप्रिटेटिव टूल बाय आर इंटरप्रिटेटिव टूल बाय आर जजेस ठीक है तो जब बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर डॉक्टर बनाई गई मतलब उसके जो पॉइंट थे वो एनलिस्ट किए गए तो उसका जो मेन आइडिया था वो टू प्रिजर्व द नेचर of the indian state and to ensure ki jo goals and objective hai hamare constitution ke wo fulfill ho paaye theek hai to kya kya hai what are the uh, clauses or what are uh, you know the pointers when it comes to uh, basic structure doctrine to pehla hai supremacy of the constitution supremacy yani ki hamara jo constitution hai it is supreme supreme of supremacy of the constitution theek hai then we talk about uh, the independence of judiciary जुडिशियल इंडिपेंडेंस ठीक है बिकॉज वी हैव अजाय फेडरल सिस्टम क्वाजाय फेडरल ठीक है देन सेक्युलर कैरेक्टर ऑफ आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो सेक्युलरिज्म ठीक है सोशल कैरेक्टर तो वेलफेयर स्टेट हमारे पास वेलफेयर स्टेट है डेमोक्रेटिक डेमोक्रेटिक डेमोक्रेसी कैसे होगी फ्री फ्री एंड फेयर इलेक्शन फ्री एंड फेयर इलेक्शन ठीक है sovereignty ensure sovereignty sovereignty is also basic structure right federal federal character of our constitution so federal features we have asymmetrical federalism unity and sovereignty sovereignty of india individual freedom individual freedom and liberty theek okay? hai and um, डेमोक्रेटिक एंड रिपब्लिकन फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट रिपब्लिकन और राइट एंड इन फैक्ट देर आर एन नंबर ऑफ केसेज रिलेटेड टू इट तो मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू नीड टू नो इज केस ऑफ नंदा भारती ठीक है लिबर्टी सॉवरेनिटी रिपब्लिक नेचर ऑफ इंडियन पॉलिटी जुडिशियल रिव्यू जुडिशियल 
review then harmony and balance between so uh, balance between fundamental rights and dpsps directive principles of state policy then division of authority uh, distribution of power between center and states theek hai jo seven lists hai seven schedule jab hum seven schedule ki baat karte hain theek hai distribution of power then uh, principles of natural justice principle of natural justice rule of law theek hai constitutionalism we have cons we have features of constitutionalism embedded in our constitution then uh, procedure established by law due process of law equality equity to ye sare bahut sare you know there's an end of the, i will provide notes to usme main sare pointers uh, you know i'll mention it so these are the important this is what the basic structure doctrine entails all right okay the next is india set to triple speed of its fastest fastest super computers processing power uh, to such degree eases complex mathematical calculations required for accurate weather forecasting so this is uh, related to your uh, gk again so we'll just look into it pratyush is one of the india's most powerful civilian supercomputers it is housed as at indian institute of tropical um, uh, meteor uh, meteorology and uh, in pune okay so this has been imported from france theek hai so i'll be sharing notes related to what are supercomputers and uh, the different initiatives national supercomputing mission as well so pratyush india has developed its fastest fastest supercomputer named pratyush which is world's fourth fastest supercomputer theek hai world ka india ka fastest hai and uh, pratyush so this is fourth fastest in the world theek hai world mein fourth fastest hai india ka fastest computer hai and uh, uh, it is dedicated for weather and climate research iska jo kaam hai na that is related to weather and climate research isiliye meteorology department mein rakha gaya hai pune mein it follows machines from japan us uk uh, it can deliver a peak of a peak power of 6.8 petaflops all right so a key function of the machine's computing power will be would be monsoon forecasting using a dynamic model this requires stimulating the weather for a given month right and uh, with the new system it would be possible to map regions in india at a resolution of 3 km and at a globe of at 10 km so uh, at 12 km so ye bahut uh, you know it can cover a lot of area theek okay? hai so this is india's most powerful civilian supercomputers pratyush okay and mihir so ye do hai pratyush and mihir with a combined capacity of 6.8 petaflops right okay अच्छा नेक्स्ट इज सत्यजीत रेज किन वेलकम कोर्ट ऑर्डर ऑन कॉपी राइट द फैमिली ऑफ सत्यजीत रे ऑन वेडनेसडे हेल्ड द डेली हाई कोर्ट ऑर्डर ऑन रेकग्नाइजिंग द फिल्म माइस्ट्रो एट द एज द फर्स्ट कॉपी राइट ओनर फॉर इस फिल्म नायक एज अ वेलकम डेवलपमेंट इन द फील्ड ऑफ राइट ओवर क्रिएटिव कंटेंट तो हम थोड़ा कॉपी राइट लॉ देख लेते हैं पहले तो ये समझना जरूरी है कि वॉट आर आई पी आर आई पी आर आर इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट ठीक है इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट्स क्या होते हैं इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी क्या होती है इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी वो होती है विच हैज बीन क्रिएटेड विच इज अ क्रिएशन ऑफ योर माइंड ऑफ अ पर्सन माइंड ठीक है अ पर्सन लेट्स से डिजाइंस अ पर्टिकुलर थिंग अ पर्सन इनोवेट कुछ कोई अगर इंसान कुछ इनोवेट करता है या कोई इंसान स्केच बनाता है या पेंटिंग बनाता है या ऐसे लिखता है ठीक है या फिर म्यूजिक uh, कंपोज करता है ठीक है तो ये सारे क्या हो जाते हैं दीज आर ऑल इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टीज अगर कोई कोडिंग करता है अगर कोई कोडिंग प्रोग्राम कोडिंग करता है देन दैट ऑल्सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूट दैट पर्सन इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी ठीक है बुक लिखना ये सब तो उसमें भी कई सारे तरीके के इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टीज होती हैं जैसे वी हैव पेट उसमें राइट्स होते हैं तो आई पी आर बेसिकली इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट्स वो होते हैं कि जिसने भी जो चीज बनाई है जो उस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉपर्टी का ओनर है द पर्सन हु हैज क्रिएटेड द प्रॉपर्टी उसको कुछ बेनिफिट मिलना चाहिए राइट right? उसको उसके माइंड uh, क्रिएशन का कुछ बेनिफिट मिलना चाहिए यूजेज ऑफ माइंड का तो इस वजह से राइट्स uh, दिए जाते हैं उन लोगों को जिन्होंने प्रॉपर्टी बनाई है जिन्होंने इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी क्रिएट करी है 
तो दोस राइट्स आर एक्चुअली नोन एज इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट्स दीज आर इनटेंजिबल राइट्स ये इनटेंजिबल राइट्स होते हैं बिकॉज उसमें क्या होता है अगर लेट से किसी ने पेंटिंग बनाई है वो अपनी पेंटिंग्स को सेल करके ओनरशिप किसी और को दे सकता है बट ऑन दैट ही कैन एक्चुअली मेक प्रॉफिट तो उसमें बहुत सारे यू नो फैक्टर्स होते हैं पर्सन कैन अर्न कमर्शियली इकोनॉमिक वायबिलिटी and a lot of you know innovative it has to be innovative तो बहुत सारी चीजें होती हैं तो कई तरीके के intellectual property rights होते हैं जैसे patent हो गया patent किस में दिया जाता है generally innovations में scientific inventions में ठीक है innovations या inventions ठीक है scientific inventions में something that is not part of state of art ठीक है तो we'll not go into details ठीक है डिजाइन्स एक्ट भी है तो डिजाइन्स भी एक तरह का इंडस्ट्रियल दीज आर इंडस्ट्रियल आईपीआर्स यू कैन से इंडस्ट्रियल होते हैं ये इंडस्ट्रियल कैटेगरी में आते हैं उसमें पेटर्न डिजाइन ट्रेडमार्क ट्रेडमार्क में जनरली यू विल सी कमर्शियल जो लोगोस होते हैं ठीक है या यू विल सी ट्रेडमार्क ऑन इवन द लुक ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट वो भी ट्रेडमार्क किया जाता है एंड देन जी आई जियोग्राफिकल इंडिकेशन ठीक है ये सब इंडस्ट्रियल एंड उसके बाद ये सारे इंडस्ट्रियल के हो गए और फिर आता है कॉपी राइट कॉपी राइट इज फॉर क्रिएटिव कॉन्टेंट ओके राइट ऑन क्रिएटिव कॉन्टेंट क्रिएटिव कॉन्टेंट मतलब इफ अ पर्सन हैज रिटर्न एनी बुक इफ अ पर्सन हैज कम्पोज म्यूजिक ठीक है और इफ अ पर्सन हैज मेड अ फिल्म तो सिनेमाटोग्राफी ठीक है बहुत सारे डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कॉपी राइट सो इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी आर राइट गिवन टू पर्सन ऑफ क्रिएशन ऑफ देर माइंड ठीक है एंड दिस इज कवर्ड अंडर आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी सेवन ऑफ यू एन यू डी एच आर यूनिवर्सल डेक्लेशन ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट विच प्रोवाइड फॉर द राइट ऑफ बेनिफिट for the for, from the protection of moral and material interests resulting from authorship of scientific literary and artistic production right and we have the wipo convention also so i will be sharing notes related to ipr so that you can revise your ipr theek hai i am not because there is paucity of time so hum isme bahut detail mein nahi jayenge Now, just understand की कॉपी राइट क्या है कॉपी राइट एंड रिलेटेड राइट आर रिलेटेड टू लिटरेरी एंड आर्टिस्टिक वर्क सच एस बुक्स एंड अदर राइटिंग म्यूजिकल कॉम्पोजिशन पेंटिंग स्कल्पर कंप्यूटर प्रोग्राम फिल्म ठीक है दीज आर प्रोटेक्टेड बाई कॉपी राइट फॉर पीरियड मिनिमम ऑफ फिफ्टी ईयर्स आफ्टर द डेथ ऑफ दी ऑथर ठीक है इंडिया में क्या है कि इंडिया में जो ऑथर है या ओनर है उसकी डेथ प्लस सिक्सटी ईयर्स ये प्रोटेक्शन इंडियन इंडियन कॉपीराइट एक्ट सो वी हैव द इंडियन कॉपीराइट एक्ट जो स्टैट्यूचरी फ्रेमवर्क है कॉपीराइट एक्ट ऑफ 1957 ये इंडिया में इंडिया का लॉ है रिलेटेड टू कॉपीराइट एक्ट एंड ऑफ कोर्स इट हैज बीन अमेंडेड सेवरल टाइम्स ओके अच्छा Copyright is legal right that protects original work of literature, art, fi music, films, computer programs. It safeguards expressions of ideas rather than ideas themselves. The owner of copyright has exclusive rights to adapt, reproduce, publish, translate, and communicate the work to public. The Act has undergone several revisions since it was first passed in 1958. The most recent amendment was in 2012. तो टू में सबसे रीसेंट अमेंडमेंट हुआ था राइट ओके सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू हिस्ट्री बिकॉज दिस इज गोइंग टू टेक अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम ऑल राइट सो दिस यू नीड टू नो जस्ट बेसिक्स ऑफ कॉपीराइट लॉ और जो डिफरेंट आई हैं कौन सा आई किस पर्टिकुलर कैटेगरी में डील करता है क्या क्या प्रोटेक्शन होते हैं तो ये सब आपको बेसिक आइडिया इज सफिशियंट फ्रॉम योर क्लैट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ओके ऑल राइट The next is global uh, body keeps NHRC waiting over political meddling. So National Human Rights Commission की इसमें बात करी गई है. तो इसमें the for second time in the decade UN recognized global alliance of national human rights institutions the HRIs, right? Uh, deferred the accreditation of National Human Rights Commission India. NHRC India citing objections such as political interference in appointments involving the police in probes into human rights violations and poor cooperation with civil society 
okay so the letter also cited lack of diversity in staff leadership and insufficient action to protect marginalized marginalized groups as reasons for deferment of uh, accreditation so bahut sare reasons are actually you know abhi recently nhrc ka jo act hai usme amendment hue hain so nhrc in compliance with the paris principles so bahut sari cheeze hain isme राइट सो जनरली वॉट इज सीन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल जो अपॉइंटमेंट से रिलेटेड अमेंडमेंट हुए हैं नाउ ऑफकोर्स देर इज लॉट ऑफ इंटरफेयरेंस बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट वेन इट कम्स टू अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ द मेम्बर्स ऑफ द नेशनल ह्यूमन राइट कमीशन राइट एंड देर टेन ईयर एंड देर ऑफकोर्स सैलरी रिलेटेड प्रोविजन अच्छा ये तो है दूसरी चीज ये भी होती है कि कई बार स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स में स्टेट में जो स्टेट ह्यूमन राइट कमीशन है उनमें कई बार ऐसा होता है कि अपॉइंटमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स करती नहीं है टाइमली बेसिस पे तो बिकॉज टाइमली बेसिस पे अपॉइंटमेंट नहीं होता है उसकी वजह से यू नो बहुत सारे पेंडेंसी हो जाते हैं केसेस में दूसरा ये भी बिकॉज एन एच आर सी इन इंडिया इज अजाई जुडिशियल बॉडी एन एच आर सी इज अजाई जुडिशियल बॉडी तो उसको उसको ये बोला जाता है कि एन एच आर सी इज अ टूथलेस टाइगर बिकॉज इट हैज इट लैक्स पावर उनके पास जो कमीशन होते हैं ह्यूमन राइट कमीशन उनके पास सिर्फ रिकमेंडेशन की पावर होती है उनके पास सजेशन देने की पावर होती है दे डोंट हैव पावर टू गेट देर गेट दी ऑर्डर एग्जीक्यूटेड और इम्प्लीमेंटेड जो कि पावर एजुडिकेटिंग बॉडीज के पास होती है जो कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ के पास या एक्चुअल जुडिशियल बॉडीज के पास जो पावर होती है वो पावर एन एच आर सी या जो ट्रिब्यूनल है या ना दर क्वाज आई जुडिशियल बॉडी दे डोंट हैव द पावर सो एन एच आर सी का अगर कोई केस है इफ द पार्टीज आर नॉट यू नो सफिशियंट दे आर नॉट सेटिस्फाइड विद द रेजोल्यूशन ऑफकोर्स देन दे इवेंचुअली गो टू द कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ राइट सो ओके नाउ वील जस्ट वॉन्ट टू द नेक्स्ट क्विकली वील कंप्लीट the session and i'll be sharing the notes as well so bulgarian writer wins international booker prize ye this is also important from your gk point of view uh, georgia uh, gosporinov translator angelina rodel won the international booker prize on tuesday for time shelter time shelter is a darkly comic novel about dangerous appeal of nostalgia theek hai time shelter jo book ka naam hai usme इंटरनेशनल बुक ऑफ प्राइज मिला है सो यू कैन टेक अ नोट ऑफ इट देन द लास्ट न्यूज आइटम दैट वी विल बी कवरिंग इज डब्ल्यू टी ओ रिफॉर्म्स एंड अर्जेंट एंड टॉप प्रायोरिटी सो इंडिया हैज एक्सप्रेस्ड कंसर्न दैट सम सजेशन एंड रिफॉर्मिंग ऑन रिफॉर्मिंग डब्ल्यू टी ओ इज रिक्वायर्ड सो डब्ल्यू टी ओ वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में रिफॉर्म्स की बहुत जरूरत है ओके नाउ द डब्ल्यू टी ओ एज यू ऑल नो इज एन इंटरनेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन ठीक है इट इज अ स्पेशलाइज एजेंसी ऑफ यू एन so um, related to trade specialized agency of united nations related to trade it was established in 1995 isse pehle kya tha gat tha general agreement on trade and tariff theek hai usko hata ke fir this was replaced by wto in 1995 uh aur gat kab aaya tha gat aaya tha 1947 mein right gat traces uh, bretton woods institution ke time pe uh, hua tha and this was post world war 2 और राइट right, उसके साथ साथ गैट के साथ साथ आईएमएफ एंड वर्ल्ड बैंक भी स्टैब्लिश हुए थे दीज आर ऑल ब्रेटन वुड्स इंस्टीट्यूशन द मेन फंक्शन ऑफ डब्ल्यू टी ओ इज टू हेल्प प्रोड्यूसर्स ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज एक्सपोर्टर्स एंड इम्पोर्टर्स प्रोटेक्ट एंड मैनेज देयर बिजनेसेस रिफॉर्म्स दैट हैव बीन सजेस्टेड तो पैंडमिक रिस्पॉन्स पैंडमिक के बाद यू नो दर लॉट ऑफ अपग्रेडेशन रिक्वायर्ड पैंडमिक रिस्पॉन्स राइट एंड uh you know response related to dispute uh, resolution to so, dispute resolution uh, wto mein ek dispute settlement body hai dsb theek hai ye wto ki body hai wto ke ek uh, organ hai dispute settlement body but wahan pe the dispute resolution there are a lot of uh, problems with regard to with the just bahut sare pendency of cases bahut zyada ho gaye hain and dispute resolution should be quick and efficient so that is one of the reforms that is required right and uh, uh then india has also talked about special and differential treatment special and differential treatment
and we need to of course there is a modernization that is required in wto modernization also uh, right so there are different other reforms as well okay so this was uh, it this is it for today for uh, you need to know for see for clat you need to know to wto ke bare mein not just wto even imf uh, world bank wto in ke kon who is the current chairperson who is the person who is uh, current chairperson kon hai in sare organizations ke theek hai in ke headquarters kahan located hai headquarters kahan pe hai theek hai and then when were they established year kon sa hai which in which year they were formed and um, uh right and uh, generally isme uh, uh, what is the you can talk about inke functions kya hai what are the functions of these uh, bodies so these are certain things that you need to require uh, need to note from your exam point of view all right acha now let's uh, so this is done if you have any questions or if if you have any doubt related to anything that we have covered today please uh, write it in the comment section below and i'll take up those doubts right and uh, so thank you for attending so uh, you can join my telegram channel with the link here or you can sc uh, scan the barcode and uh, for regular updates i'll also be sharing the notes related to the uh, things that we are covering once it is completed the drafting and everything okay then thank you for